Hey guys, it's me again. Today we are going to continue our latest tutorial on our simple dialogue system by adding some custom editors to make the usability of the whole uh, creating dialogues and adding answers to it a little bit more user friendly. Um, I'm also going to be adding a link to a GitHub repository in the description below. In this repository, I'm going to be uh, adding every new step of the way of this tutorial. So if you want to play around with the code, make sure to check out the repository. Also, uh, if you have any questions or want to just say hi, make sure to follow me on my Twitch channel where I do game dev related stuff and uh, gaming in general. So yeah, would love to see you guys. And without further ado, let's get into our tutorial. Alright, so this is where we left it at the last tutorial. As you can see, we have our dialogue text for each dialogue uh, segment. We have our answers and we have which segment is going to be called after each answer is chosen. Now, if we go over to our updated solution, you can see that using our custom editor script, we were actually able to tidy this up quite a bit. So. Here we have all our dialogue segments, which are hidden and foldouts, so you can uh, open and close them. Then you have your dialogue text and the answers. And then we have this selection, which allows us to select which segment is being called after we, um, after we click the answer, right? So let me show you how we actually did this. Okay, so this is our dialogue editor. It's a class which lives in the editor folder of our project and it extends unity editor dot editor. We have to provide this custom editor attribute up here to tell unity that this class should be used to open uh, the dialogue type. So when we click on a dialogue option or a dialogue object in the project explorer, this class is going to be used for uh, displaying the custom inspector. In this class, we have two references that we store. We have the dialogue object itself and we have this lists of booleans, which we are going to use for our foldout. Now, first things first, we are going to initialize our editor in the on enable method. We are going to cast the target, which is a property of editor itself and cast it as dialog. So we can use it like a dialog object. And then we are initializing our show segments. Now for each segment in our object, we add one Boolean to our list and true or false means basically if we show or hide it. I can show you how this works down here in our on inspector GUI we iterate over our segments like so whoops like so and then here we use this line of code to display the foldout so we end in our show variable which is stored in our show segments and we use our dialog text as a label so when we go back to unity you can see this segment text is actually synced to the dialogue text. So this way you always know um, which dialogue segment you're currently working on. Then we have this if branch. If this value is true, it means that the fault out has been opened. And then we can go and display our four answers. Now, I've put everything in separate methods. As you can see, we have this answer text and the segment selection. Let's start with answer text. Now for our dialog text, we actually display a label first. So we have dialog text, GUI layout label, and then we call the answer text method, which displays this text area. This works by inputting the value that is currently stored in our segment dialog text, and then we'll return the changed value if we have made any changes in the text editor. The method itself is very simple. 
all we do is we take the string input, pass it to a GUI layout text area, and then we have this GUI layout options array in which we just define the minimum height for the object. So we have a little bit of space uh, saved by default. Then we have this segment selection method. This is used for our selection of the next segment for each answer. The method itself is straightforward as well. We import the current segment after the answer and a string that we use for a label. It works as following. First of all, we create a list of options, which are going to be our segments that we can choose from. Then we iterate from uh, this list of segments and add it to our options. Then we use the editor GUI.popup method in which we input the label that we passed earlier. We have this selected value, which as you can remember, is the segment after the answer we actually currently are working on. And then we pass in our options by casting them to an array. Now this we have to repeat for all our four answers. And then all we have to do is to add a GUI button to actually be able to remove a segment. This is very simple. We do if GUI layout button add a label, which is this button over here. If this button is pressed, we remove the segment from the list and also remove the show segments element in the list. And if we now click this, it removes an element from the list. All right. Last but not least, outside the initial for loop, we have this button that lets us add a dialog segment, like so. All this does is call the add method on the dialog segments by creating a new dialog segment with a default text and also adds to our show segments list. And this is pretty much it. Now, if you want to play around with this code a bit, you can uh, go to the GitHub repository that I linked in the description of the video. Um, I will publish all future tutorials that I make in this uh, video as well. Now, as you can see, this is still not very uh, generic. So we have a set amount of answers in this and we have to actually do a little bit of uh, code copying, which is not cool. So in the next tutorial, we are actually going to uh, refactor our code that we can have a dynamic amount of of answers and uh, clean up this stuff a little bit more. We're also in future tutorials going to be looking at how we can make our dialogue look a little bit better and further improve this uh, GUI that we created. So make sure to subscribe to the channel and I'll see you guys in the next one.